Hedera H. Barca, I do have some really good news for you and it actually may blow your mind or possibly spark your curiosity because again, we have actually secured quite a few of these council members just this year. We've seen quite a lot happening in the past couple of months, but I do think that we could potentially be seeing this one thing. So we're going to take a look at that. And we also have some updates coming in from Dovu, from My Terra and Salsa Swap. And then we will have, be having a look at the price action of both HBAR and Source today. So all I ask from you guys is to just like the video, support the channel and subscribe as well if you want your daily Hedera HBAR news. I always like to see my regulars in the comments as well. So make sure that you are there so I can see that you are out here now if we first have a look at the piece of news in relation to the council members it does come from the hbar bull video with rob allen so we've discussed uh, how many council members they currently have left and we have actually filled the seats up in general so we saw some big names coming in of this year for example like hitachi us and also mondelez international now those announcements actually came back in davos 2024 and that was in february and it's really good to see that we're getting into other industries for example with the confectionery industry as well as with the manufacturing the car industry and so hbar bull over here basically puts the question to rob allen saying could we potentially be seeing a full council by the end of this year because we don't really have that far to go as of now of course the council members do have their options in order to renew their terms 13 of them this year renew their term successfully so i think that they will be carrying on their term for another one to two years approximately but we still do have some more left being roughly around about 20 of them that will be having to renew their terms i think by late of 2024 of this year but do correct me if i am wrong now let's first take a look at this they're doing amazingly well. That's going to be the hottest ticket in town down there. All right, so the next one is definitely in your wheelhouse. He says, this year, three new governing council members were announced. Can we expect a full council by the end of the year? Now, in December, Shane claimed that we might have a full council by the end of 2024. And at the time, it seemed a bit far-fetched considering the pace we had had up until that point. But now it doesn't seem all that out of the realm of possibility. What are your thoughts? Yeah, we wait for months and months and months, and then we get three in the, in the space of yeah, three weeks, I think, or, or a month or so. And what a great combination, you know? So so getting Hitachi, getting Mondelez, and getting BitGo, you know, there couldn't be more different businesses. And, and yet, every single one of them has a unique and contributory and additive effect on the governing council. And because they are, you know, these, these latter stage uh, council members, They've been through the hoops, right? They, the Memcom really goes to town on why they're joining and the use cases that they're bringing and all the other benefits. I have to say, and I wasn't around last week when it was announced, but the BitGo process took you know, a significant amount of time because there, there isn't an obvious, well, there wasn't an obvious uh, rationale behind having BitGo's kind of custodian or custodial provider joining the governing council other than the immediate effects that it would have. Except that over time and through discussion, you know, they made a very, very strong case for the sorts of um, aspects that they would bring and the benefits to all the council members potentially, but also, you know, uh, externally to the uh, the exchanges within which their, their technology integrated, the fact that they already hold a lot of HBAR, the fact that, they, that they're that running six mirror nodes, I don't think they're public yet, but they're significantly invested already, which was a surprise, actually a surprise to all of us. And I, I've been really heartened by the response of the community. I mean, almost the community feedback on BitGo was, this is the, one of the best governing council members that, that's ever been announced. And that wasn't my personal view when I first sort of uh, saw the application, but it makes sense. And that's kind of, you know, the wisdom of the community is far greater than the wisdom of the, of the governing council, I think, in many ways. And I, I can say that with a foot in both camps. But yeah, so I think those three governing council members, three in, in quick succession, has been, has been an amazing addition. I'm speaking to them all with my Corpcom hat on. They were all, you know, eager to engage and talk about their use cases and, you know, take them forward. So I couldn't be happier. Is it 31 or 32? 32, 32, I think. I think, I think we're at 32. Yeah, with BitGo, it's yeah. 32. So yeah. Seven. yeah. So so it's seven to go. I mean, Shane doesn't know, right? Shane, the, the foundation have a role to play in presenting potential governing council candidates into, into the process. And then they stand back and, you know, watch the process go. There are other 
um, introducers of, um, of council members as well. And as I've said in the past, there's, there's quite a strong pipeline. In fact, there's a very strong pipeline. I wouldn't bet against it this year. So seven this year. I think it might be a little longer, but, uh, but not that much longer. And what's really interesting is that and you heard it from Rob over there. He says that we could potentially be actually getting these seven council members that we do have left. So these are the seats that we still need to fill up. Again, it doesn't mean that we will be filling them up by the end of the year, but there is a possibility, of course. I mean, he also said that we had three just come in in one month, and that was back in February. Of course, that was a snowball effect. It didn't mean that it only took one month to onboard them. It obviously would have taken months prior to that before they actually gained a seat on the council, but it all just happened in one month. And so that is something that I thought that could surprise you. Over here from Crypto Observer, we have this quote coming in from Charles Adkins saying that blockchain technology sets out to enable individual collaboration and allow societies to play a part in determining the future of technological innovation. And DLT has created new trust layers that enable individuals, enterprises and governments to generate collective social impact without the risk of bad actors acquiring influence. I mean, we also know that when it comes to decentralization, that a lot of people like it because you have more privacy and you do, they don't actually store your data in a way that centralization would actually force upon you. We do have a Dovu update. So we're not going to limit ourselves to just a couple of centralized exchanges. Token liquidity is a very important part of the Dovu operating system, Dovu OS, and we're going to be turning up the volume and growing our community. So it's good to see that they will be going on quite a few exchanges and not just restricting themselves. We also know that when it comes to source swap, that they have put in the application for the tier one centralized exchanges too. From my terror, we have this new tweet saying, navigating through a maze of 136 unique chemical substances and their complex exposure limits can seem daunting. So obviously my terror is actually using the Hedera network. It's built on Hedera, but with my terror, workplace safety doesn't have to be a Herculean task and together we can create a safe workspace. So this is in relation to the employees and what my terror are doing is they are protecting the employees from the occupational health hazards that can go on within the workplace. And according to my terror, there are 160 million work related illnesses worldwide causing under 3 million deaths, which is actually quite a lot. And hazardous substances like chemicals contribute to 41% of these and they are providing. And so what my terror are doing in order to try and minimize this is they are providing protection for employees and they are simplifying the risk assessments by streamlining the health hazards, task and work and environmental data into these user-friendly task exposure risk assessments. And you can see when it comes to these key fe features, how they're breaking it down in order to centralize their health hazards and their control recommendations in one streamline and utilize technology to tie everything together as well and also helping com companies with the compliance so they know that they are up to date with the systems and all this data is pretty much logged so that we can definitely minimize the workplace health hazards. From a social swap we have a nice update. We have $300 million in 30 days. So social swap has processed over $300 million in trades in the last month alone across 700,000 transactions via the Hedera smart contract service. So on Ethereum assuming an $80 gas fee which is an abomination this would incur 56 million dollars in fees making it over 1000 times costlier than Hedera. so we obviously know that ethereum aren't really a competition over here and they are lagging by so much i mean i'm not quite sure how ethereum are going to be able to do it with their gas fees going forward but again the 56 million dollars in the gas fees is something that Hedera can provide a solution to because we are nowhere near when it comes to that and that is to do with the trades as well so the more trades that we have we don't even reach that gas fee in total in general so good to see this update coming in from Salsa Swap and of course with the Hedera network got to give benefits to them so the price action from source today we are currently trading at 0.1722 we are down by 3.59 percent on the one day chart for the 24 hour volume we are down by 23.26 percent and we are trading at 2.33 million dollars but if we have a look at the earlier hours of the morning for today we were trading at 0.1768 on the seven day chart we are down by 15.48 percent so we're seeing more of a pullback especially from that all-time high of 23 cents we pulled back by six cents at the start of the week we were trading at 20 cents and then we did come down to 17 cents at 0.1761 on the 10th of march now midweek 11th of march we did go to 16 cents and we were able to rally 0.1857 on the 13th of march and so now we're pretty much at 17 cents on the one month chart we are up by a nice 113 
11.39%, 111.39%. So despite this head and shoulders pattern, because we have now come down, we are still up by more than double our original price, especially when we were at 8 cents. So we are still doing pretty good with the price action for source. Let's take a look at HBAR for today. So we are down by 3.8%. Is it something to worry about? I wouldn't really say so because I did expect some sort of downtrend and possibly to the mid range of 11 cents, but we are trading at 0.126 out of now. For the one week chart, we are down by 4.7%. We started off at 0.136 and then midweek 11th of March, we did go to 0.125. Now we had that nice rally to 0.137, just touching below 14 cents. But of course we have come down by roughly around about one cent. On the one month chart, we are still pretty high. We have increased by 54.9%. And so we have pretty much nearly doubled as of now. I definitely want to see more consolidation and support at the mid range of 11 cents. Now, if we do go to the upside, I want to see if we can test that 13 cent level again before we can head off to the next price target of 15 cents. Guys, if you want daily Hedera HBAR coin news, subscribe to the channel and like the video as well.